Gigguk didn't realize he was talking with the ReZero author at a party. My man is partying with Nagatsuki Tape himself? I was at a party the other day. I was at an industry party and uh, met the author. Industry party. This is a big stage for the most recognized, brand safe creators, you know. People who get sponsored by like Crunchyroll to stream Overlord all fucking day on YouTube. For a ReZero, what a great guy. What an amazing guy, man. The light novel author? Yes, the light novel author. I did not know he was going to be there. Tape? Yeah, Tape Nagatsuki. He was at this random industry party that I was at and I got to talk to him a little bit. I was actually surprised that I didn't know that obviously, you know, when I heard his name, I figured I figured out who he was, but okay. I didn't know originally going into the party that he was going to be there because I didn't know what he looks like. And then he said his name and I was like, did I, did I hear that right? No, no, he, he can't be. He can't be. He can't Mr. Be ReZero. Guy. He can't be the goat. He can't be the goat himself. And the reason I didn't think it was him originally was because he was so f***ing confident. I've, feel, I've met a few mangakas confident. and like authors before, but compared to other authors I've met before, he was super f***ing confident. So, again, I, I don't want to stereotype mangakas, light novel authors, but if you've seen, you know, like, Oshindoku, for example, season two, one of the common thing was, like, the genius authors are quite usually uh, socially inept and awkward and don't know social etiquette and manners. It might be, you know, a little bit look reclusive, right? A little, 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 little bit on, on the tism spectrum, but Tafe, it's I'm like, he's uh, quite the extroverted Giga Chad. He was, he could talk so well and he talked okay. super fast. He pushed. Oh, he's a yapper. He fucking talks. Um, I don't think talking fast is necessarily a good sign to indicate like intelligence, but the fact that you can have a cohesive conversation and you're just, you know, spitting words really fast probably means that your brain is working a little bit better than the average person. Pushed my Nihongo level to its limit because he talks like a machine gun man he talks he just had this aura and i'm like no mm. you are you are too confident to be the goat so as when he introduced his name i secretly like searched up his picture and i was like no way it's <laughs> him it's actually him no way and luckily i got the opportunity to meet him I said i was a big fan of his work not just with re-zero uh wonder what nagatsuki tape would say if Giga showed him, hey, I made a video about your series. This is called a ReZero in five minutes or like eight minutes or something. Like season one content. The one that everyone, you know, blames Giga for like ruining ReZero to the normies. A lot of people hate on Giga because obviously he has a big platform, big voice. And anytime you get bigger and bigger, I give you that 1% rule, remember? 1% 1 of 100, one. Let's scale out to 1,000. Suddenly there's 10. Scale out to 10,000, 100, right? If you apply this, you know, percentage, even if it sm seems small, relative to a bigger, bigger scale, it's going to get bigger and bigger. So you're obviously going to get more haters. But um, a lot of people say, like, nah, Giga ruined, like, the normies' um, entrance to ReZero because of how out of touch and misinformed he was and giving those takes. And he got a lot of hate for that shit. Um, but with VV as well, and he was like, holy shit, you enjoyed VV? No way, that's sick, man. He was just genuinely so wholesome. Funny thing, I asked him if he was aware how big his work was abroad, mm. and would you ever be interested in going to an American convention or an, oh. an American event, uh, or going to an overseas event or stuff like that? And he was like, yes, I would love to go see my overseas fans. I'm aware, I'm, I'm very thankful that it has an overseas audience. But he said, <laughs> he said, damn, guns just scare me. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> True. Yeah, honestly, I would, I, I, I would hate to go in public as a big name, known by everyone, crazy schizos might show up and try to assassinate you. Now, obviously, this is not the case for 99.9% .9 of the audience. They're, they're usually normal, but all it takes is one crazy motherfucker to ruin it. And you could have an Oshinoko situation. Uh, I don't blame him, bro. I don't blame him at all. <laughs> he's, he's like, I, I really, really want to go to America. I'm scared of guns, though. I'm scared of guns. And I'm like, ah, this is not, not, this is not the first time I've heard a Japanese person say this. Because sometimes, definitely the image that Japanese people and Japanese, you know, Japanese authors can have of America is like, ah, it's the country with guns. Okay. Yeah, guns and hamburgers, brother. And the average 15-year-old looks like a fucking 30-year-old man.
obviously, you know, everyone has different stereotypes and understandings of what a different nation may be, but if you look at, like, Japanese um, depictions of American people in, like, anime or cartoons and stuff, it's really funny. Yu-Gi-Oh, for example, there's a character named Keith Bandit. <laughs> He's like Mr. America. He's like such an obnoxious, you know, proud person wearing like an American bandana, you know, and says, this is our country, get out of here. He's like, yo, you're not even in America right now. Checks out. But he didn't, he definitely didn't write off the one day possible opportunity of going abroad and going to America. Um, and then I said I was a big fan and he gave me a hug, man. He wow. gave me a hug. What the f what what a, I, I was not expecting this man he he just gave me a hug he said he's you know just so grateful to his fans gave me a hug and he said if there is you know whatever i said i was a youtuber uh, mm. at least my you know i got introduced how humble my manager my agency and he said to me the most wholesome thing in the world and he said if there's anything i can do to get even one more fan i would like to do it and i'm like oh damn oh, that's so wholesome man ah uh, and then gave me a hug and then i was just like damn damn yeah i mean obviously you shouldn't just trust a person's entire identity to be you know be, to be based off of the first impressions obviously everyone's trying to put up a good front and try to look good you're networking you want to look good if you look bad it's going to look bad on you but that's not to say he's like lying and deceiving you know gigguk it sounds like nagatsuki tape is truly just a Extrovert Giga Chad who just wants to spread love of his show and just wants more fans. Perfect. Um, what a go. What a, what a f go. What an absolute legend, man. And uh, that was like, I wasn't expecting that, but uh, my day, my week has been made. <laughs> what, a, what a great interaction. He just sounds like a genuinely nice guy. Yeah, he is a genuinely nice guy. A genuinely nice and. I saw that comment here. How is this guy wholesome while making ReZero? Here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. Uh, have you seen that meme of like uh, two separate artists where one is so happy happy but their art is just fucking terrifying and the other person is super depressed but their art is super wholesome and happy? There's something like that going on here maybe, right? Where your entire persona and your makeup may be the exact opposite of the art you make. He's a genuinely nice guy. A genuinely nice and confident guy who can speak very well and that is in terms of like the confidence level and just being very very talkative that's not something that you see so often with manga authors or light novel authors. yeah because the stereotype of them being shut and reclusive you know a little bit um what's the word eccentric right not the average um well-spoken outgoing person but more of a shut in is kind of the stereotype of that there's Inspiration lol? Oh man, I was inspired. I was inspired. He still live tweets reads your episodes like a fan. Oh man, I didn't even know he had it. Yeah, I, I, okay. The, the craziest tweet I remember coming from him was his apology to the audience that in, I think season one, there's an ending where you see Emilia's day-to-day -day life. And this is before obviously Emilia had Trial 3, where she sees the reflection in the mirror finally and sees herself for who she is. And that's supposed to symbolize her accepting you know, herself despite all the prejudice, you know, and her just kind of rejecting her identity. But in season one, that didn't happen. And there's a scene where Emilia's brushing her teeth in the mirror, and the mirror reflected Emilia. This is not a big problem. This is such a trivial, minor inconvenience. But some people are like, no way, why, why is Amelia seeing herself in the mirror? She shouldn't be able to see herself in the reflection. And the author actually came out and apologized for that. And I was like, that is so sweaty. The standard <laughs> that's been placed on Nagatsuki Tape and ReZero is so insane. That you're scrutinizing this one slice of life day to day Amelia scene in the ending. Oh my God. Twitter. Shit. I gotta follow him on Twitter now. <laughs> All right, is there some funny comments though? Bro is only so confident because he was on his fourth loop of meeting you at the dinner. <laughs> this is the comment, bro. Bro is so confident because he's on his fourth loop. <laughs> That's right. Nagasi Tape has returned by that. A kid nut is crying in the corner. Hey, a kid nut mentioned. That's kind of mean. Just bring it up like that. Uh, it's just all wholesome memes, right? It's just all wholesome memes. Definitely a kid that is one of the most recognized uh, ReZero content creators on YouTube.
Top IRL. Wholesome and confident got that aura. Riding ReZero. How do I make my MC suffer this week? Yeah, again, this whole contrast of who you may seem like at a glance, first glance, and what kind of art they actually create. From his description, Tapi sounds like Subaru's dad. Oh! Nagatsuki uh, Kenichi, yeah? Kenichi is a gay chad. He's so confident because he knows he's constantly putting out peak. That is true. If your show was just breaking these records and having, you know, even that map of like most viewed anime 2016 of all different regions, there was just ReZero all across the board, and you're Mr. ReZero. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. A lot of people don't realize while Super suffers a lot, ReZero at its core is a story about hope and giving up. Not giving up. That's why Tape is an amazing guy with a lot of confidence, just like he slowly develops Super into that character. Yeah. A lot of um, uh, outgoing, happy people, it's not as if they are completely free of troubles and struggles. It's usually what you're seeing is the final product. You don't see all the, um, the grind, the, uh, the suffering, the whole just learning from your mistakes and growing to be a better person. And just because you, know, you suffered and struggled doesn't mean you're suddenly just going to end up being like a bitter person. But sometimes you turn out like Nagatsuki Tape. A kid that a nanny used in their room is like, it should have been me, not him. I just think that comments like this is so cringe. Even if it's just in good, like, it's just, it's just jesting. We're, we're, we're just making jokes. But, like, comments like this gives me an energy of, like, why would you just, like, drag another CC's, you know, name across just to get fucking, it's just rage bait. It's, it's just fucking stupid. Tape is basically Arc 4 plus Subaru. Okay. Garf truly living the dream. Oh, bro's done Villain Saga author, interviewed, fairy telling Eden Zero author, Overlord as well. Wonder uh, when he's gonna meet uh, Mushoku Tensei's author. I believe the author Tape Nagatsuki embodies perfectly the confidence and kindness of his character Natsuki Subaru and what everyone, uh, everything he aspires to be as a human being. That motherfucker got on his crazy side quest, two goats meeting. And yeah, that's pretty much it. It's just glaze, glaze, glaze with the casual, you know, rage baits of. People just dragging other CC's names, but it's, it's not that big of a deal. It, it's a very just casual thing. This is obviously not, you know, Giggles Main's channel, but it's Sleepy Close. Go check them out. Here's a link, and I'll see you guys next time.